Hey again. Today we're going to start working on this neck. Uh, now that we know about what it's supposed to be, and we know what it is, uh, first let's talk about the neck. It is the one thing on a guitar that has to be perfect. Uh, when I first started out, um, I thought you could get eh, so so and it would play. You have to have it perfect. Without a good neck, you might as well throw the guitar in the trash. The thing that makes a good neck is a good straight neck with straight level frets. The neck is the base of the guitar, so the base of the neck has to be straight. If we put a uh, fret level on this, I'm getting ready to talk about that. We know that it's curved up. To get this out, to set up any guitar, you have to have a way to make sure this neck is perfectly straight. When I first started out, I used a good old yardstick, and somehow it worked for a couple years. I think what happened was I just didn't come across a neck that really needed any real work. I couldn't figure the neck out. I couldn't figure out what was going on. In fact, the neck's hanging on the wall over there. So I gave up on it and got another neck. Um, shortly thereafter, I was determined to figure out what was wrong with that neck. And so I got this. This is a must have. You have to have this. This is a precision straight edge. It is guaranteed to be completely perfectly straight within one ten thousandths of an inch. That's straight. That's what you're looking for. Spend the money. I think I paid 45 or 50 dollars for this one. I use it all the time. I go from the bridge to the nut. I, I do a quick check on the neck. Uh, you have to have it. Then when it comes to setting up the neck and making sure that the base of that neck is perfectly straight, your second half to have is called a notched fret leveling beam. These notches will accept the frets so you can get down onto the actual neck itself. These come, a lot of times you get a one for a Fender, one for a Gibson, one for a Les Paul, 22 fret, 23 fret, 24 fret. Man, this one got bent. But I got the universal one. Why did I get the universal one? Number one, it was cheap. Number two, I knew that I could put it on my perfectly straight edge, my precision straight edge, and make sure that it was right. So those are the two tools that you have to have to set a neck up. You're not going to get by without them. If you don't have them, you're going to have to get them or you're just going to have to pay somebody to do the neck for you. If it's in bad shape, if it's not in bad shape and you've been playing it and it plays fine, then you can get by with something a little bit less expensive. But if you're going to get into luthier work, you've got to have the precision straight edge. Now, I've been looking at this one and I've been uh, working on finding something to fit this nut on the truss rod. And as we knew, the, needed some work. Um, there's some epoxy, some glue down here that's not allowing the socket to get onto the nut. So I'm going to have to trim that out. I'm going to trim that out with, I have a very small uh, bit on my Dremel tool. And I'm just going to work it around that nut. I'm going to try to zoom in and show you what I'm doing. Okay, this proved really hard to capture. It's probably not going to be in focus. But what I'm going to do, the smallest bit I can have, find, just a little grinding bit, not really a cutter. And I'm just going to get in here and try to work some of this epoxy out very carefully.
Okay, and once we've worked this till I can get this nut off, then what I'll do is do the same thing, but without the nut in place, I don't have to worry about hurting the nut. So then I will clean out all of that epoxy that's left in there. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now and show you some before and after pictures of that nut after I have it out. Okay, so what I did was I used the Dremel tool and I got that taken out until I could get the nut off of it. Then I took a couple pictures of all the epoxy that was in there. The only thing I can figure is this is a two-piece neck, which means two sides. Somebody probably saw that crack, epoxy it up. The neck warped. There was no way to adjust the truss rod because the nut was epoxied into the headstock. But I've got it all cleaned out. It looks good. Um, I'm going to clean it up more. Now I know for a fact that this is epoxy that somebody dripped down the side front of it. We may get lucky and be able to wet sand that out, but I've already kind of reserved myself to repainting this headstock. That's later on. Right now we're just wanting to get this thing set up. So, the truss rod nut completely off, nothing but wood. And I take my fret straight edge and set of filler gauges and I just start going under it see what I can get and as you can see I kind of cheated and couldn't wait but I got about 14 thousandths of an inch in the middle here so what do we do about that well since the neck is bowing up Tightening up the truss rod is going to bring it back down. We're golden. If this was bending down, then you'd have to rig up a clamp system and steam it, and over a period of a couple days, straighten it out. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of three-in-one oil and just put a couple drops. Man, it just didn't get any longer. I just want to put a drop or two on this truss rod so that I'm sure I can get the nut on and have it work smoothly there it is just sitting nice and flat so the moment of truth we know we got 14 thousands right now so let's give it about a quarter turn and let's recheck it and there's my 14 now all of a sudden won't fit so that's good that means the truss rod's working we'll drop down to about 11 11 is not going try nine what I always shoot for is less than two thousands you get it perfect you get it perfect but you are working with wood. I'm not believing this. Actually, I can't see daylight anywhere, so let us. This is 2000. I'm 
I can force it, especially if I wiggle. Man, it's pretty much there. Now, just for what did they say? Shits and giggles. Just for shits and giggles. Let's try one thousands. Okay. One thousands will go, but just about these six frets right here is what I'm going to do. I mean, just a. I couldn't even feel it turn. I just watched the uh, watched the socket. Come on, baby. These are the two that always end up being ripped. The two thousands and the fifteen, ten thousands. Well, here we go. Man, that is. That is tight. Here is two thousands. Like I said, this is what I generally shoot for. Just another, just a hair. And as you can see, we that's super tight. I've only got one fret, and that's right there at this uh, fret marker. So we're within two thousands. Let's try one more, just to. I'm digging it how responsive this is. I've been worried about this going through next setup. Okay, now I went too far because now I'm starting to be able. Now the neck is actually going back. Went too far. We're going to loosen it up past where we thought we were going to be. It again. Okay, so now I'm good on my ends again. And by doing this, you can pretty much see exactly where that bow is. And that's turning a lot easier now. It's feeling really good now. That's a tight 2000. So we're going to leave it at that. So, 
like we talked about earlier, you got to have a straight face. You got to have a good foundation. We've got that now. Uh, trust Rod is working as it should. Everything's great with that. Uh, and even though this neck has some wear, I used my fret leveling gauge. I tried to keep it in between where the string wear is. But 2000 is super tight, only in about these three frets right here. You're not going to get much closer than that unless you pull all these frets off and re-level the, the fingerboard itself. Now what I want to do is move on to my frets. First thing we're going to do there is see exactly what radius we've got. I'm guessing this is probably going to be about a 10 or a 12. This is a nice little set of gauges. Um, you can just sit it, sit it on there. There it is. Check it on the fret, check it on the fingerboard, check it in several places, especially down here where you know nobody's been playing it. That's a 12. I can see a little bit of light in the middle. That was a 10. So now we're going to a 12. That's solid. No light in the middle. It doesn't rock back and forth. So we know we have a 12 inch radius neck. So knowing that we have a 12 inch radius neck, you have two ways of doing leveling your frets. The first way a lot of people do is they'll get a fret block, fret leveling block. It's only about 10, 12 inches. I shy away from that because as you sand, even if you're not trying, you're going to goof around a little bit. <coughs> then they also sell fret leveling blocks that are very long. Those are great because then you're getting all the frets at the same time. The problem with those, that I feel, are they're flat. And you run a risk of putting a flat spot on every fret on here. So what I tell you is a Stumac 12 inch radius. leveling block. I use this for both the fingerboard and the frets. And you just let it let it do the work. I've got some thousand grit on here right now. And just looking at some shiny spots looking pretty good. I'm catching the middle up here, I'm catching the sides down here, but I'm also catching the middle. So That's going to work out very well for me. I'm going to take now and I'm going to tape off the fingerboard. I'm going to go every single fret as tight as I can get it up to the fret use my nail or exacto knife and try to get it I mean right down on that fret I'm gonna do that for this entire fingerboard and then I'll be back okay I got my tape on uh, when I get down it, it's fairly easy you want to get as tight as you can to the fret if you get over the fret a little bit take your exacto knife your hobby knife slice a little bit Pull that little string out. Get down to the lower frets where they are more narrow than the tape is wide. Um, I just put a piece of tape. I take a piece of tape and 
stick it on the workbench and then take my hobby knife and cut the widths I need keeping track of the straight edge on it so that I can use the straight edge to go up against the fret. Once we have that done now what we want to do take a permanent marker write your name all over now, but take a permanent marker and go over the top of every fret and what this is going to do is it's going to enable you to see exactly when these frets are level no more no less it also uh, sometimes it'll show you that you need to replace frets if you have one that uh, is not being touched while the other ones are all being ground down pretty hard we're not going to have any trouble with that on this guitar I can tell just from that little bit that I did but the permanent marker is going to show you without a doubt high spots and low spots okay now nothing touching the neck no pressure on the neck this is thousand grit this is just thousand grit sandpaper I mean, we're really not taking off anything but the marker and the oxidation with this and just slowly go back and forth I let I don't push down any I let the wood do the work let well not the wood I let the uh, let the sandpaper do the work and this is looking so good I'm going to take a picture, I'm going to try to show you, but what I'm seeing is, I this is on every single fret. Some frets I'm taking material off on the bottom side, some frets I'm taking it off on the top side. Like right here, through here, I can already see that my low spots are towards the bottom from about the 8th to about the the 14th fret so surely somebody's been jamming hard on this I'm gonna take a picture and I'm gonna keep going over this and uh, show you what it's gonna look like when you're done with it just remember don't push down no pressure on the neck you don't want to bend that neck we saw how easy it is to adjust it and just back and forth ever so slightly in fact I change arms, change hands once in a while just to make sure that you're not doing that natural body twist. You switch hands, go back and forth, and you will get it. it it's no problem. You'll, you'll have it, no problem. So let me get some pictures and finish up this little bit of a process, and then I'll get back with you. Okay, I got them leveled out. Um, the elapsed time on that was probably about 30, maybe 40 minutes of just letting the weight of that block and that thousand grit go through until I went through the marker. I've got some good pictures for you. What you don't want to do is get where you're trying to take the marker off. Oh, we've got more down here, so let's get on this area. Back and forth over the whole neck slowly methodically keep it flat keep it level swap hands because your body's going to twist you're going to twist that block a little different I still have a little bit of marker on my low notes like my low E my A down here but as long as they're low nothing's going to hit them you're not going to be playing down there anyways I'm mostly concerned from about the 14th fret up as long as these are low sometimes um, I have seen people where well, they would actually take more off the bottom anyways to get it out of the way if they put brand new frets on so this looks great some of these little areas around the 12th fret 
this silver where the marker's coming off just barely touches it. That's all you want. You know your level then. You know you've reached the top of that crown. Now what I'm going to do is take some 2000 grit and I'm just going to go one at a time and round these off, dress them up, make them pretty. Take away the marks and the scratches that I just put on with this. That's the uh, the beauty of using the thousand grit on the block is you don't have to go back and do a whole lot of cleaning up. Plus, you get the oxidation, get the corners of your frets. Just get them shaped nice with the 2000 grit okay after that we're gonna go over it I'll show you two different ways uh, either by hand with some brasso or some some metal polish or with good old Dremel tool and a little polishing wheel probably gonna do that tomorrow uh, get ready to go to work so I did want to go ahead and get this done and that trust rod has been on my mind this has been on my mind constantly I'm glad it's out of the way. I'm glad it worked out well. And man, this thing is going to be nice. Okay, I couldn't stop. I forgot to show you the crown. You can get a crowning file, but these were originally flat. Just how they were from the factory. After you're done with the leveling, you'll see that it's kind of hourglass shaped and they'll be flat and then a little rounded and come back down to a flat to cure that what you're going to do i've got a file one side of it is uh i've ground down so i don't have to worry about it on the wood it's never going to cut in there's nothing there you want to hold it at an angle and go and take those hourglass shapes out on this one, not a whole lot, just a little bit. Work your way down it, then come back, go the other way. And that's going to take care of those hourglass shapes and make these frets a little bit more uh, uniform, which is what you're shooting for at this point. Now, this one, as low as they already were, as low as they are. I uh, hate to do that. I did it. Um, I, I didn't want sharp edges, so I did it. Then you go over with the 2000 grit. That gets it looking really good. And uh, I got pictures of that. Then what I do is I like to use a Dremel tool. I have a little buffing wheel that I put on it. And uh, there's a little kit, comes with the buffing compound and all. Put a little buffing compound on the wheel. And fire him up. And this is what puts the finishing touch on it. There again, I angle it, I work my way down, and I angle it the other way, and I work my way down this way. A little compound on it it doesn't take much it doesn't take a long time to do this will also help get rid of those hourglass shapes and really smooth things up really level things out once you've gone down the neck then you take I have an old t-shirt it's what I use a piece of an old t-shirt with your finger and just buff it out it, and you will see, I mean, it'll look brand new. It'll, it'll shine like a million dollars. It'll be great. At that point, uh, you're ready to take the tape off and check out your work. Okay, we got the tape off the old grit. Um, went over with the file, went over with 2000 grit. 
when I with the Dremel tool and the buffing compound. Man, they look great. They're low, but on this guitar it was made to be low. The lower the fret, the harder you have to push, and you also have to get closer to the fret to play a good note. On these particular models, with the, where's my paper? Flow through nut. Anyways, on these particular models, a lot of people do what they call modernize them. And what they'll do is put regular frets and a regular nut on it and play the shit out of it. This one, we're trying to keep it as original as possible. So, I didn't spend a lot of time crowning them. I wanted to keep them original. If we get together and I'm not happy with it, then what I'll probably end up doing is talking to Henry and to letting me do a tall fret on the front to hold the strings up. Something like a... Uh, like a, a tall jumbo or something I didn't put regular frets to rest the way down that way we can crown them and bring it up more more, more up to date right now I think it's going to be great they were already low to start with they were already flat to start with now the neck is straight the truss rod is working correctly the frets have been leveled the frets have been polished only one last thing to do and that is the fingerboard itself and to do that ugh, what I like to do is uh, the way it's been done for centuries ugh, just good old old linseed oil you get a can as you can tell, it lasts forever. This can probably do 5,000 guitars, I don't know. But all you do, I guess you could get a paintbrush and put it on, but I like to just take a rag, and get some on the rag, and wipe it on. This will sink in, I put it on really thick. I want it to sink into the wood and I will I will apply this thick I mean because this is an old neck it needs a lot of rejuvenation it sinks into the wood then it dries basically That's why I like to put it on thick, try to keep it from drying so fast, give it a chance to, to sink in. But I'll do this every day for, I don't know, until it stops taking it. It's probably be three, four days, maybe a week at the most. Then, we'll polish this whole thing up again. We'll polish the frets again, we'll polish the the fingerboard with the linseed oil on it. In the meantime, uh, we're going to handle the headstock. That's definitely not going to be today. But I did want to go ahead and get this neck. The more I looked at the neck and the more I worked on the neck, the more I just I had to finish it up. I'm going to end up being late for work. But I got a nice, a nice fret job on a nice straight neck now.